Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to walk you through how to handle log files, particularly those types of messages you get in your log files that maybe you want to move them over and collect them somewhere else, and then how to handle that on a weekly, daily, monthly basis, however you want to do it, uh, and be able to either dispose of those log files or push them up to another server to uh, you know, be able to filter through the error messages or whatever you're looking for and keep those permanently. So stay tuned right after this. So one of the things that uh, I wanted to do today is I have a problem. I have a firewall that runs and it constantly inserts uh, messages about when it denies access to a port. So, I mean, that's great. I want that information, but I, it's, right now it's collecting into my syslog file, and I don't want that. <laughs> I want it to push it out to its own file. So let's see. I'm, I pre-recorded this session earlier, so uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at it. And mostly it was so that you didn't have to watch me stumbling over the command line as usual. So... Yeah, so the first thing I want to do is become root, <laughs> because that's one of the problems I always seem to have. So we'll look at the syslog file so you can see. It's just chucked full of these drop by firewall. So I have some services that are running on my network that are very loud and noisy, and they, and they communicate and broadcast over the network to everything to try to see if there's something there for it to do. So... Um, I <laughs> would like to move those over to its own file. So I don't want that. As you can see, it's getting quite large. I mean, just a day's worth of these uh, can can grow to, you know, two or three megabytes of information, which that would be an awful lot of data to go through to try to find something. So our syslog D is what controls what messages are placed where in your system. And so that's a good place for us to start. Uh, because as messages are received by the kernel or the kernel generates messages, it's going to call this process and let it determine which files and where to put them. Uh, so, yeah, so what to do with it. Disposition, basically. This is this utility has been around a long time. Uh, it, it has roots all the way back into Unix as well. There was also a sysklogd service that preceded this. But you may find that on some older systems, but it has been superseded by the R syslog uh, service today. Again, be careful with R syslog. It is an R command service. So, yeah, it's model for handling authorizations and host entries are <laughs> primitive. So, yeah, just be careful of it. So the other thing we want to do is look at the configuration for this because this is really where it defines how our syslog actually handles messages that are headed for the uh, uh, for the system logs. And of course, the default one is syslog on, on Linux. Our uh, syslog is the default. So if it is no, not going anywhere else, it's going to syslog. And again, that's a holdover from sysklogd. That was the original name of the file. On some Unix systems and some Linux systems, you may find that this is collected totally different. So, but the majority of them will use this method. So what I'm showing you today should work on about 80 to 90% of the Unix distributions out there. So right now I'm looking for my the directory. There's a a main file, and of course this handles all of the configuration for our syslog, as well as any system level messages that it's handling, and then the disposition which files those should be those should be placed in. So that's setup information. This is group ownership by default. Who owns it? These are the rules, and that's the ones we're interested in. So. If messages are coming out of these daemons, uh, they will be placed in the appropriate log files. And then there's just some other things about where, you know, to catch all. What do you do if it's not in this list? Where does it go? So there is a 
uh, a .d file that you can put individual entries in for particular things that you're collecting. It helps you go back later and identify, okay, so this mess, this these type of messages, for example, in my case, the IP tables, those would always be defined in this particular file. So, and those get appended to the rsyslog.conf when our syslog runs. So, yeah, it will pick these up. And they are ordered, so you have that number in front. So, if you have a particular order you want to preserve, you can just you know, numerically uh, sequence that number up, and that will that will read those in the order of the files. So, so the way this is constructed is there's some there's some comments here uh, that I left in, and uh, there is a di a colon message. Now that is a message type, but it's not a message type. But it says if the message contains the phrase dropped by firewall colon, then those messages would be redirected to var log IP tables. So you can see the drop by firewall in the message in the syslog, and then you can see how I'm defining it. So um, you could I could you could easily just say firewall colon. That would be fine too, but I just I'm I'm always really careful with this. So once I restart the service, the our syslog service, then it starts collecting. Hopefully, but let's check the status on it first. I always check the status anytime I make a change to its config to make sure I didn't have a syntax in there that is keeping it from coming up because I wouldn't then get any logging at all on the system and that's not desirable. So IP tables log is now created. You can see it's starting to fill up with the traffic that I wanted, but what about syslog? So yeah, syslog looks a little cleaner, but let's make sure that they're not going there. So over on my workstation here, I'm going to, well, I, I yes, yeah, so even, even recording, I make mistakes. So I want iperf3, and then I'll, I'll try to connect to fed. Now, there's no service up here and run it, and there's no firewall rule to allow it in anyway. The, I think the port number is 5201 for iperf3, so... If any entries with a DPT equal to 5201 would be those being denied by the firewall that uh, that iperf3 with a connection request is attempting to open. And trying to find a particular entry is just ridiculous. So the best way is to just grab for it. There we go. So those are all the entries that were generated by this attempt. And they're coming from 192.168.1.7, which is which is black ice. So, yep, it's uh, yeah. The only problem that I we have right now is that file is going to fill until the disk space runs out. So there's nothing in there that's going to handle that file to clean it out, rotate it, or anything, or compress it. So what we really need to do is we need to fix that. And there's a utility under Linux called log rotate. And log rotate allows me to rotate files, to compress them. It can email them. It can even insert them into a SQL database if you want. So it can move them off to another server. Whatever you want done with it, you can do. And it has a particular construct, uh, which looks a lot like YAML, but... Uh, it's not. It's just a. It's it's just a configuration file. As far as I know, it's not YAML. But uh, but in here I have some general things set up just for log rotate D. It also creates logs for itself, so it has to manage what happens with its logs, and that's what this does. But you'll notice that include in there. It's including anything that's in the Etsy log rotate.d directory. So that's where we go next. And you'll notice that some of these have specific uh, entries like fail to ban and unattended. But our syslog is where we made the change. It's where That's the one that's controlling where those messages are going. So it would make sense that this would probably be the place to add our file. As you can see, it's already doing a number of log files. You can just list the log files in, you know, in whatever order you want. And then you have the braces, and that's the commands it's going to follow. So all I need to do is add var log iptables.log to this. 
And then the commands are to rotate uh, up to four different times. So it'll have IP tables dot, uh, dot log dot one dot two dot three dot four. It does this weekly. If it's missing, it won't try to do anything. If it's empty, it won't do anything. Then it compresses. It will delay compress the first entry, the, the dot one, and then shared scripts are next. And there's a post rotate command, which is to restart our syslog. And the reason for that is you got a stale file handle there once you've moved it. So you you got to get our syslog to recognize there's a new file handle to create a new file handle. Otherwise, nothing will get written. <laughs> After once you've rotated, nothing will happen. It'll just sit there. So, okay. So what I need to do, as you can see, it is rapidly filling up. Well, what I need to do right now is I could wait for a week and let it, and we could sit here for a week, but I don't think you want to do that. Instead, let's just force a log rotate command. So I'm, I'm executing the file, our syslog, and I need a dot. There we go. So that's going to call that config file and it's going to force a rotate. So it's going to, every log file that's in that list is going to get rotated right now. And right now it's all still being, you can see it's just filling up like crazy. So let's see if we've got a dot one. And we do. You'll notice it did not compress that file because of the delayed compression on it. So the second time on dot two, it will compress, but not this time. That makes it easier for you to go back if, if you know the log files have rotated in the middle. Uh, it has also restarted the service because it is a lot. It is, you can see the 230 there is writing into the IP log file. So, you know, basically that's that's it in a nutshell. It's not a difficult thing to do. Uh, it, 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 but this, I hope this video saves you some time because most of the time in Linux is trying to look up how to do things, right? And how to understand how to do them. So hopefully this will save you a little time if you want to, if you have files that are collecting forever and you want to deal with them. Uh, and, or you have messages going into a syslog that you would really prefer to have out on their own. So this would allow you to do that. This, by the way, works with any messages that you can identify as being unique. So, yeah. Um, there is a way, too, that you can use the processes you can, to control it. So any error messages, messages coming out of a particular process, you can have it do that as well. Uh, you will have to have our syslog uh, control that, however, and that may not always be desirable either. So hence the reason why you see APT and some of those others that are in there because they're not system controlled processes. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you all again real soon and bye for now. Thank you.